Hello everyone, my name is Justin and today I'm going to show you how to make your own coilover suspension for your NA or NB Miata. Here is everything you're going to need to build your own coilovers. Bilstein shocks off of a NA or NB Miata, coilover sleeves, spring, bump stop, washer, lower bushing, spring isolator, top hat, upper bushing, fender washers, and the nuts. Next, I'll show you how to pick out each component and assemble the coilover. The key to this build is getting Bilstein shocks, which came stock on a few special edition Miatas. You can get either an NA or NB Bilstein shock, but keep in mind that the NA Bilstein shock is slightly shorter than the NB shock. And if you want to use a longer NB shock on an NA, just keep in mind that you probably are going to need an extended top hat to make use of that longer shock travel. And I'll talk about this a little bit later. For me, I chose uh, Bilstein's off of a 10th anniversary NB, and they're going on my 97 NA Miata. To prepare your shock for the coilovers, you're gonna wanna completely disassemble it. So take off the nuts, the top hats, the bushings, the spring, the dust boot. Get it down to the bare shock. Save the top hat and bushings, you might reuse those later. Everything else you can throw away. Next you're going to need to take the spring perch off, which is this aluminum piece here. It's just held on there as a friction fit, so hit it a few times with a hammer and it should come off. Put some nuts on the end so you don't damage the threads. Put the rod side down and then hit the top of this with a hammer and eventually it will come off. Be careful to watch out for the circular clip that's underneath and not to damage that when you're swinging the hammer. When you get the spring perch off, you'll see that there's this little tab here and you can just knock that off with a hammer and screwdriver. Next, you're gonna to wanna to get coilover sleeves. I recommend getting this style, which has a machined lip on the inside of the sleeve. And this lip sits over the circular clip and completely encapsulates it and so that way there's no way for that circular clip to come out. If you look on the internet you're going to find two different versions in a 4 inch and a 5 inch length. The reason you might want to get the shorter 4 inch length is because you will find later if you're using extended top hats that this will interfere with the top hat so you'll need to use a 4 inch version. Otherwise you can just get the 5 inch version and if needed, use a hacksaw to trim down your sleeves, and that's what I've done here. There is a little bit of slop between the sleeve and the shock, so I put one wrap of aluminum tape around the shock, and that really tightens it up and makes it a snug fit. The best thing about building your own coilovers is you get to choose your own spring rates. You should get 2.5 inch diameter springs, but the length is up to you. I've got 7 inch springs here and those make for a reasonable ride height. If you wanna go pretty low, I would get a shorter spring, like a six inch spring, and probably some helper springs to go along with them so that the springs don't come completely unseated when the suspension isn't fully compressed. I went with 500 pounds for the front and 350 pounds for the rear. This should be pretty stiff compared to the stock. If you want a softer ride height, feel free to pick some lighter spring rates. For your bump stop, I recommend getting these speed thane ones for an Integra. They're a bit spendy, but they're of good quality. To make your bump stops, you're gonna to wanna to cut about 35 to 40 millimeters out of the small end of the bump stop. You can just use a hacksaw to do that, and you'll end up with something that looks like this. And you're just gonna slide that over the shaft, and that will be your bump stop. Next, you're gonna to wanna to add your washers. I'm going to put on one stainless steel fender washer. This is a 3 8 fender washer. And then this washer, which came with my top hats. There is a little ledge here on the shock that the fender washers will rest up against. If you're using thin ones, I would stack a couple together. This one's pretty thick, and I will rely on that one. Next, you need to add your lower bushing. If you're using your top hats from your original shock, 
there's a rubber bushing that you can slide on here. I'm going to use this rubber bushing which came with my top hats and slide that on here. If you're starting with NA shocks, I would ditch the top hat that comes with them and at a minimum get NB shocks top hats and put those on. By using NB top hats, you raise the mounting point of the shock and that in turn gives you a little bit more shock travel and keeps you from bottoming out. If you want to do one step further and make sure that you don't have any issues with shock travel, you can get aftermarket top hats like these which are made by ICS. These do the same thing by raising the mounting point of the shock and help you gain back the shock travel that you lose when you lower the car. To provide some cushion between the spring and your top hat, especially on extended top hats or custom top hats, you should get a spring isolator which is basically a polyurethane bushing that slides over the shock and rest between the spring and the top hat. It's a good idea to glue or screw your top hat bushing to the top hat like I've done here. I just used three screws and countersunk them in this bushing and then tapped some holes in the top hat and that secures the spring isolator to the top hat so that if your spring ever does come unseated under no compression then it won't be bouncing around and be sloppy and, and run the risk of your spring bouncing around and clashing with the other parts. Once you have the top hat on, take the what's left of your bump stop and cut another disc out of it, at least enough to cover up the shaft part that has no threads so that we can thread a nut on there and not have it bottom out. This will help reduce noise and vibration as well by having an upper top hat bushing and you can cut this off the rest of your bump stop with some with a hacksaw and I'll slide that over and to finish it off I'm gonna add a couple more fender washers the nut and the jam nut Once you have the coilover fully assembled, we're going to want to take a few measurements to make sure that none of the parts are going to clash into each other uh, when bottoming out. I've got this coilover set in its most lowered position. We want to put it in that position for measurements because that is the worst case scenario where we have the least amount of shock travel available. I've just lowered the spring perch and compressed uh, the, the shock and until everything was nice and snug and then I'm holding it in place with a couple of clamps. The first thing we're going to measure here is the amount of spring travel versus the amount of shock travel. We want to have more spring travel than shock travel so that we don't turn this spring into a block of metal which is called coil bind. To figure that out I'm going to take a measurement of the spring diameter that's about 0.41 inches and there's one, two, three, four, five, six coils so 6 times 0.41 is about 2.5 inches. That means when this spring gets fully compressed, it will turn into a block of metal that is 2.5 inches tall. Since we know this is a 7 inch spring, 7 minus 2.5 is 4.5. That means we have 4.5 inches of spring compression. Using that 4.5 inches, I will place the measurement up here on the coilover from the top of the sleeve and we'll look to see that the four and a half inches ends up inside of the top hat so if this were to fully compress and if that was allowed to happen that means this shock needs to travel up inside of the top hat. By looking at the components I know that this coil sleeve is too big to go inside of my spring isolator so it cannot go up inside where it may need to under full compression. There's basically two things we can do to get more clearance so that this shot can travel up inside the top hat. The first thing you could do is if you have access to a lathe you can mill a new circular clip recess about an inch to inch and a half lower and that will allow you to slide that sleeve on further and that will bring the top of the sleeve down 
lower by however much you machine that slot in. If you don't have access to a lathe or don't feel comfortable doing that, you can just cut these sleeves like I talked about earlier with a hacksaw. Just cut off an uh, inch or inch and a half and that will provide more clearance and you won't smash the sleeve against the spring isolator. And then the spring isolator will be able to come down over the, the shock body like that and allow for the shock body to go up inside of the top hat. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one off short just like I cut this one. Now that we've cut down the sleeve, we know that nothing is going to interfere uh, during compression. The last thing that we should verify is that the shock body hits the bump stop before anything else comes in contact. That way we have a nice cushioned contact when we bottom out and there's no metal on metal contact anywhere. Remember we had four and a half inches of, of spring travel. We want to make sure that the travel between the shock body and the bump stop is less than four and a half inches. That way these two contact first before the spring bottoms out. And we can tell easily just by uh, taking a quick measurement from the top of the shock body to the bump stop is about 2.6 inches. We know the bump stop is going to compress a little and the shock will go up a little bit further. If you estimate even three or three and a half inches up into the top hat, we know that we're not going to run into coil bind issues. The shock body is always going to hit the bump stop first. We're going to want to perform that measurement exercise one more time uh, in a raised position. That way we can figure out how high we can crank this up without running into issues. So if I crank it up about an inch and a half until this becomes snug and everything is tight and I lay this up here again using that four and a half inches of travel, it looks like this would be about the max height that you'd want to go on this coilover uh, that leaves a little bit of room for compression on the bump stop and overall four and a half inches of travel at this right height. The last thing I did was put a fresh coat of paint on these and then reassembled them. Obviously the next thing to do is to get these installed on the car. So in my next video, I'm going to show you a before and after with these coilovers installed so you can see what they look like. And then I'll drive it around for a few weeks and give you my impressions on what I think, how these compare to the stock suspension. So make sure you subscribe so that you're notified of that new video. And when that comes out, I'll put a link up in the corner and also down in the description. And until then, we'll see you next time. I'm so excited.